Hey everyone, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here today. In today's video, we're going to be talking about something quite interesting, and that is what happens if you were to overvolt your brushless motor. A lot of motor manufacturers out there do place a maximum voltage on a brushless motor. And we're gonna see what happens if we actually exceed this value and go to a higher voltage than what the motor is actually designed and rated for. First question that comes to mind is why would somebody want to go and throw more voltage at this motor when the motor manufacturer is clearly stating to stay within a specific range? Well, the obvious answer to this is going to be a lot of us just wanna go faster. That's pretty well about it and you can go faster with more voltage now there's a couple things that you can do to figure out if this whole idea is possible and what are the risks associated with these types of things in a few minutes here I'm gonna take the limitless v1 out where I've put a castle creations 1512 1y 2650 kV brushless motor in. This motor is rated for a 4S lithium polymer battery pack, but we're gonna scrap that idea because today we're overvolting and we're dropping a 6S pack in that system. The big question is what is going to happen? There are a few different scenarios that could play out. One, nothing can happen and we simply just run the car as if this never actually happened. Two, we could actually destroy our brushless motor in a few different ways. And three, we can destroy a lot more more than just the brushless motor and take out the whole entire car. So I hope the last things there don't happen and we get to see the results. I'm gonna data record the run just so we have that information that we can take a look at and see what happens here. Just before we run out here, I'm gonna make one calculation and I'm gonna make the calculation based off of the specifications that the motor manufacturer specifies. The motor manufacturer says this motor is rated for 60,000 RPM and it says that it's only rated for a 4S lithium polymer battery pack. So I'm gonna take a 4S lithium polymer battery pack, I'm gonna multiply that by 4.2 volts per cell, I get 16.8 volts as a maximum voltage, and multiply it by the 2650 kV, that gives us 44,520 RPM, a lot lower than 60,000. So going above and beyond this 4S mark is going to allow us to try to eat up more more of that RPM range from that maximum with the max voltage that they specify up to the maximum of the rated RPM for the motor. So I'm gonna take a 6S pack now and I'm gonna multiply that by 4.2 volts. That gives us 25.2 volts and multiply that by the KV of the brushless motor, 2650. And this gives us about 67,000 RPM, 66,780 to be exact. Obviously 66,780 is more than that 60,000 RPM max that this motor specification has on it. So this is what we're doing here is we're overvolting our motor past what it's rated for. We're actually in an area where we have the potential to hit 66,000 RPM on this brushless motor and we're gonna see what happens. So let's go out and do exactly that. Wow. 
All right, so we just ran the car there and we got a few runs and what I found really interesting is that the speed of the car in all three runs were extremely consistent, being of the same value if I can remember. I think it was 146 kilometers an hour or thereabouts for all three of those passes. Now the good news is nothing seemed to happen. The motor and the system do seem like everything is okay. So we're gonna talk about that very shortly. Now the bad news is, is I took the car apart so that I can access the electronic speed control wire and plug that into the computer to download all of the information and what I did the last time I ran this car is not cleared the memory so none of the data was captured from any of those runs so we're gonna have to do things a little bit differently here and we're gonna work the speed backwards to find the rpm of the brushless motor knowing the size of the the tires and knowing all the gearing that we're using in this car we're gonna jump on to the patreon calc sheet that we developed there and use that spreadsheet to ultimately determine the RPM that the car was running at. So let's head over to the computer and do exactly that. Welcome to the RC Explained Patreon Calculator. This is what we're going to be using here today. Now the first thing we're going to do is jump to this tab. We're already on it. Car Gearing Speed KV Calculator. We're going to work with the left side and a little bit on the right side as well. Let's go through it and enter in all the information that we are going to need. So the first thing I need to do is enter in the cell count. We used a six cell count here. This is going to be entered into this box. The KV of our motor we know is 2650, the max cell voltage. These packs were taken off the charger a little bit early and allowed to settle in at 4.1 volts. We know that the load factor is going to be pushing this motor. So the load factor is based off of how heavily we are loading the motor and we're loading it quite significantly. So I want to be, you know, part way of the ways towards that heavily loaded motor. The motor would only really allow for maybe a pass and a half, maybe two passes at most, and it was over the temperature. So I'm gonna put this at about 10% here for this value. So the next thing we need to do now is on the right hand side, these cells that I'm using do suck, they're very old. I need to put in here about 2.1 milli ohms on average per cell. And then what I wanna be able to do is enter in the loaded current. I'm expecting this to be under 100 miles per hour for sure. So probably around 150 amps is going to be what's at speed. Generally speaking, we're gonna be over this in order to accelerate. We're gonna be above 200 amps during acceleration when we go through this, just because that's where you pull the the most amount of current. So now we got to work on the gearing. We've already selected the V1 limitless here in our chart. If we select another one, everything changes. So V1 limitless. However, we don't use this pinion gear or the spur gear. So we're going to have to go and change that. What we're going to change it to is the 21 and a 42 tooth gear. Now the next thing that I have here to do is change the tire di diameter to 99. Not a big deal. It's not going to make much of a difference. And this is what we end up with. So this calculator is predicting, is estimating that the speed we get out of this car is going to be 153 kilometers an hour or 95 miles per hour. And of course we know that we ended up actually achieving 146 kilometers an hour. So this is overestimating by about four plus three, about seven kilometers an hour. And we're entering data that we're simply guessing. We don't know what the load factor actually is and we don't know what the actual load to current at speed actually represents as well. And we're simply just guessing these values and we're able to achieve this this estimation when we know we just went 146 kilometers an hour. Our estimation is fairly good. If we wanna go faster, we can simply up the pinion gear. We do have a little bit thermal heat room within the motor to go up another tooth or two. So now that we know that, we wanna actually test and see what the RPM of the motor is at 146, cause we did not hit this amount. We know it's lower because of the speed being lower as well. I'm gonna go and just change one of these values in order to get there. It doesn't matter what we're changing. We can change the load factor. We can change the average um, voltage here or the average IR per cell. Let's just increase this until we hit it. So it looks like maybe three is gonna 3.1, 3.2. And there we hit 146 kilometers an hour. And our total loaded RPM is 51,802. So right around that 52,000 mark is our answer. I wanna talk about a few different things that's going on here. So first of all, the motor manufacturer specified and rated this motor for a 4S pack, but that is not consistent with the maximum RPM that this vehicle could actually do. If we were to go and work things backwards, this motor is a 2650 
50 kV motor, if we did 60,000 RPM divided by the 26, 50, the actual maximum voltage of this specific motor would be 22.6 volts. That's a maximum, that's the maximum that you would be able to achieve with it. Anything more like we did today is going to exceed that maximum rated RPM. Now typically what motor manufacturers, and this is what they should do, is they should give you this value rather than giving you the 4S limitation. So why do they give us a 4S limitation on this motor? Well, you have to figure this is going to be a very popular motor and has been. This motor is from probably around 2010. It's been around for a long time. And because of that, it is typically an upgrade motor that many people are going to buy and throw into their vehicles. Castle rating this motor as maximum 4S just makes it easier for success for the typical and average person who's going to purchase this motor upgrade package to install in their radio control car. It is actually really that that simple. What we did today is we completely ignored the 4S value that is given for this brushless motor and we paid more attention to the maximum RPM that this motor can spin up to and that is 60,000 RPM. Then what we did is we ran a calculation earlier in the video that told us we're going to be above and beyond this by about 7,000 RPM. Now when we take a look at the results that we got, we now know that we ended up hitting only about the low 50,000 mark. Very different than our maximum of 67,000 RPM. This is the way and how a lot of people are able to get away with overvolting a brushless motor. Because it's going to be loaded, there's going to be some voltage drop. All these contribute to a lower amount of overall RPM that you're going to get out of that system. Now there is a considerable amount of risk in doing this. In the video that we saw, I made three passes and all three of these passes, the car stayed on the ground and everything was a-okay. When those tires break free of the ground and the car becomes lifted into the air, essentially that motor has no load on it. And this means that the drive shafts, the couplers, the axles, the tires, everything is going to be free spinning and require very little power to accelerate up to the very maximum of what that motor can do. The load which is best represented by the current of the brushless motor is going to drop to essentially zero. It's not going to be zero, it's going to be a number just slightly more than zero. Let's call it zero to 10 amps. This is going to significantly reduce the voltage drop of the battery. Because the battery has no load, voltage drop is reduced, meaning that the maximum voltage of the battery is what the motor is now going to be seeing. This is going to help us get to an even higher amount of RPM. No load, more voltage, we're going to get closer to that 67,000 RPM mark. We're probably not going to hit that 67,000 RPM because that's a perfect world, but we're going to start to approach that a lot more so when we are at the loaded 50,000 RPM mark. The next question now becomes, as soon as you exceed that 60,000 RPM max mark, does that mean where our motor is going to disintegrate and blow up? Well, the easy answer here is no. It doesn't mean exactly at 60,001 RPM that that motor is going to disintegrate and turn into a big grenade and possibly take out the rest of your power system, including the electronic speed control and even possibly the batteries too. What happens is, is like everything here on planet Earth, we have tolerances and the motor has tolerances built within it as well. It could be that that motor fails at 56,000 RPM if the motor was not built well. Or it could be that the motor manufacturer applied a little bit of a safety factor on the 60,000 RPM and it's going to be okay to about 65 to 67,000 RPM. We don't know, we just know that there's risk associated with exceeding the maximum 60,000 RPM. Another day, another pass. Now I'm not sure which is going to be more exciting, showing you the speed that I just achieved with this pass or getting into the data that we're able to collect on this pass. That's incredible.
here's the graph of that pass. The first thing we can see is we pull the throttle. It's 100% at this point. This is where we expect to be the maximum amount of current. So about 205 to 215 is the maximum, a little lower than what I would expect. And then we hit maximum RPM at the very end of our full throttle run. And it happens to be 52,300. Very close to the 51,800 that we calculated in the calculator. And we're at 135.7 amps of current at top speed. Hopefully knowing these few things that we talked about in the video is gonna give you an understanding to what are the risks, what can happen, and why can these things happen if you are planning or thinking about overvolting your brushless motor. Well guys, as always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.